for, I want us to pray for our leaders, our leaders in this country, to pray for the president, to pray for his wife, to pray for cabinet ministers and other people who are in leadership, in the words that you can find to pray for leaders. Before we actually pray, I want to read from 1 Timothy. Let us go to 1 Timothy, chapter... Um, One Timothy, chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible is saying we must pray for all men. And then in verse 2 it says for kings and all who are in authority. So it's commanded in the scriptures that we should pray for those who are leaders. You, you may belong to Zanu PF, you may not belong to the ruling party, but because the ruling party is ruling, we are duty bound to pray for those who are our leaders. Do you understand? You may belong to the MTC, you may belong to Mavambo, whatever you may belong to, but the people who are currently ruling us because of what court has foreordained, because what court has foreordained, no man can argue with that. Our current president at the moment is President Robert Gabriel Mkab. And they are ruling us with his wife, and the cabinet ministers that form his government. So we are duty bound on a regular basis to pray for them. If you have, I know you may have an attitude because, because of your political affiliation maybe towards them, if you belong to maybe an opposite side. But if you, as a believer, as a child of God, you are duty bound by scripture to pray for them. Even if you are a senior leader in the opposition, when it comes to your duty as a believer, if you want your life to go forward, you have to pray for your leaders, whether you like them or not. Because if you don't pray for your leaders, the enemy is able to take, take advantage of them, influence them to make wrong decisions. And those decisions, they will affect you. They may not immediately affect them as individuals or as people who are in authority, but definitely you will feel the effects of their decisions. So if you want to live a quiet and a peaceful life, you, you need to pray for your leaders. So we're going to take a few moments to pray for our president, to pray for his family, to pray for his health, to pray for his government, his cabinet, his uh, government, to pray for parliament, and to pray for other institutions of the state so that God can actually help them, give them wisdom, give them respect and dignity so that they are able to rule us uh, with the dignity and the peace and so that they are able to meet our needs. Let us pray. Father, we thank you even this afternoon, even as we are congregated in this place. We thank you for the president of this country, President Robert Gabriel Mkabe. We want to appreciate you for his life and for the life of his wife and the lives of his cabinet ministers, and the lives of those who are in the defense forces who are ruling together with him. We pray for peace in this country. We pray for knowledge and wisdom, so that whatever decisions they make, they contribute even to our welfare. I pray for supernatural wisdom, so that whatever decisions they make, they are high-quality decisions. You are the only one who can ensure that, Almighty God. Our desire is to live lives which are peaceful, lives which bring glory to you. Father, as I pray even this morning, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for our government that even though they've got limitations, they've done everything in their power to, 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 to ensure that there is peace and stability even in this country. We pray for them, oh God, because we have got an awareness that there are human beings like us, that they can make mistakes like all of us. 
that they can make wrong decisions like all of us that they can make wrong decisions like all of us we ask you oh god on the basis of the blood of jesus christ to come through for them to come through for their families to come through for the political party that they belong to so that there is peace we pray for peace we say let there be peace even within government we pray also for unity that father even as they are governing this country may you cause them to pull together as a unity may you cause them to pull together as one in the mighty name jesus father we thank you that you are a good god and that you have got a great plan even for our brothers and our sisters who are in government in jesus mighty name we have prayed hallelujah let us clap hands for god how many people are going to pay, pray for the government? If you are going to pray for the government, let us lift up our hands. Because if you are not praying for the government, you have got no right to condemn them. Why would you condemn them when you are not praying for them? Because it's not easy to be a leader. The people that I'm talking about, they have got internal and external enemies. Not only internal and external enemies, as in human enemies. They also have got spiritual enemies. The devil doesn't want any government to succeed because the devil has got a vested interest in people suffering. Do you understand what I just said? I'm not preaching any sermon. My message is totally different and it is brief, mainly because I'm going to finish it, uh, I mean, next week, some other time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have got no right, right to condemn the government when we are not praying for them. Or even to rebuke them if you have never fasted for them. Because the moral rock, which is a prayer life, will not be there. Because even Daniel, who was praying for Babylon, I mean, who was praying for the kingdom of Babylon, he didn't condemn it. Nebuchadnezzar was a killer. I mean, he massacred children. He killed people who were innocent and those who were killed. But Daniel never condemned him. He interceded for him. Our duty as believers is to pray for our leaders. That's how you become a leader. Because you can never become a leader until you appreciate that leadership is not something which is easy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must pray for our leaders. Look at your neighbor and say, pray for your leaders. Because some people, they like reading wrong things about their leaders. And they've been saying things which, for which they don't have evidence. When they read stories on the internet or in newspapers, they are very quick to run with those stories instead of running with a prayer item. When some people read wrong information about people who are in leadership elsewhere that they've never seen, they are very quick to be evangelists and crusaders in running with negative information about people in certain places. Instead of kneeling down to pray for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever I criticize those who are in leadership, when I'm alone, I want to tell you a fact. I repent. Because it's not easy to be a leader. It's not easy to be a counselor. If, if it is not easy to be a counselor, do you think it's easy to be a president of a country? Do you think it's a stroll in the park to be a president of a nation? It is not easy. I want you to say it's not easy to be a leader. Say it's not easy to be a leader. Because when you are a leader at that kind of level, there is so, many, so much competing information which will be coming to you. Some of the information will be coming from people who are opposed to each other and you don't know which one now to accept and which one to reject. So at the end of the day, when you are making decisions, you are taking a calculated risk. And the, the decisions, you'll be fully aware that the decisions may affect other people's lives or the decisions, they will affect other people's lives. So this morning, I feel a prompting in my heart that those who want to succeed in their lives, we should not be self-centered. Let us pray for our leaders. Not only in a church service for two minutes, I think with the passage of time very soon, I'm going to organize an all-night prayer meeting. Of course, we will pray for people who will be having needs, but primarily we will be interceding for our country. Just praying for our country. 
I've, I've told you in the past that I don't have any other country. The passport that I carry, the license that I carry, the ID that I carry, the birth certificate that I have, identifies me as a Zimbabwean. Even if I go and live in Australia, I, I can't delete the fact that I am a Zimbabwean and that I am a child of this nation, that I was born in this nation. That's, I feel very strongly about Zimbabwe. When some people hear me week in, week out talking about Zimbabwe, they may think this person, what's wrong with him? Why is he always talking about Zimbabwe? It's the only nation that I have. I wanted to say it's the only nation that I have. It's even true to you. Even if you wish to be a foreigner, I mean, you may, you may start to speak Zulu and pretend you are a Zulu. But the Zulus and the other people in South Africa, they'll be knowing that you are not a South African. And when they start their xenophobic attacks, no matter how much Zulu you are speaking, they'll be attacking you. That's when you'll remember that you are a Zimbabwe and you'll start to look for the embassy officials to repatriate you from South Africa. Because to go to your home, you'll need the assistance of the embassy. That's when you'll have an awareness that I'm not a South African. I'm a Zimbabwean. Even if you marry in South Africa, you become a permanent resident in South Africa then. Still, you are not a South African. You will hear people be talking uh, trash about you or about other people who are foreigners like yourself. Hallelujah. So, this is our country. Let us love our country. It's God who gave us this nation. Let us pray for those whom God has chosen to rule over us in this nation. And let us love them. At the present moment, there is no other leader but President Robert Gabriel Mkabe. Regardless of whatever you think about him, or whatever you believe about him, I encourage you as my brothers and sisters, if you want God to do good things for you, not to think ill of him, not to wish ill of him, but to intercede and to pray and to cry for him so that God can begin to move in our nation. Hallelujah. Because God cannot bless a nation without first of all touching the leader. For God to move when a nation, he has to move when he leaders. If you didn't know that, I'm giving you that information for free. Because I, 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 maybe there is someone who may think that God can just begin to bless Zimbabwe by passing the person, persons who are ruling us. It can never happen. Hallelujah. It can never happen because these people are in positions of authority, of making decisions, which affect you and me. So how will the blessing operate? They will make decisions which are opposite of the blessing. So look at your neighbor and say, pray for our leaders. Say, pray for our leaders. Say, pray for our leaders. Hallelujah. I want you to make a commitment and say, I'm going to pray for my leaders. Actually, before you pray for a marriage, before you pray for a job, before you pray for healing, pray for your leaders first. Because the leaders are mentioned first there. There is no healing which is mentioned there. I'm yet to meet a scripture which says, pray for healing. <laughs> I'm not saying... It's wrong to pray for healing. But at least there is a direct scripture which is commanding us to pray for our leaders. There is no scripture which commands us to pray for money. Yet we pray for money every day. But there is a direct scripture which we have not undertaken, which we have not done, which is commanding us to pray for those who are in authority. Now, if you do things which are not commanded in the Bible, and you neglect things which are explicitly commanded in the Bible, how do you think God will move upon your life? Because God is not a fool. He will first of all respect his word. I'm giving you a formula to succeed. If you make yourself the center of the entire universe, you will become frustrated. If you make yourself the center of heaven and the earth, you will die. You will live and die a frustrated life. You will see those who, we, who we have come to the awareness that only God is the center of the universe. Only God is the center of heaven and the earth. Who carry out his word? You will witness those people succeeding. If you want to be successful in life, prioritize what God has commanded in his word. 
I've never seen a scripture which says pray for a wife or pray for a husband. If you have seen it, just show me. That is not to say I didn't pray for a wife. I had to pray for a wife. I have to be honest with you. But I mean what I was praying for, it's not explicitly commanded in scripture. But when it comes to praying for leaders now, the Bible explicitly commands us to pray for those who are in leadership, for kings and all those who are in authority. So just imagine you do your own things which are not directly commanded in script, and you neglect what is directly commanded in script. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can't manipulate him if you don't carry out his word. No matter how much your pastor loves you, or your mom pastor loves you, or whoever loves you, or your prophet, these days there are a lot of prophets. Or no matter how much your prophet loves you, even if you are an armor bearer, these days we hear of armor bearers, as if people are fighting a, a physical war. Of course, they will be carrying spiritual armor, the diaries of the pastor, and the water for the pastor to drink. And for them, that is the armor now, the armor bearers. Even if you are the armor bearer of your pastor, or mom pastor, or whoever is in leadership, as long as you are not carrying out God's word, you will live a frustrated life. You may be far away from the pastor physically, but if you are carrying out the word of God, you will get your breakthroughs faster than a person who is an armor bearer. It's not about being an armor bearer or about being a close friend of Mfundis or Mam Fundis, which makes you get the breakthroughs. It is about carrying out the word of God. Say it's about carrying out the word of God. Yes, especially on this aspect of praying for leaders. Because there are so many people who develop a negative attitude against the leaders, most probably because they are in a political grouping which is different from theirs. Or because they are implementing policies which they don't like. And then a person makes a decision that, ah, this one, I'm not going to pray for them. I'm going to pray some other prayer. Nowadays there is some other prayer where people are abusing a certain psalm. And they are praying some other prayer which is what does on Satanism. But uh, I mean, I know that we are going to pray for our leaders. Hallelujah. I want you to say, Oh Lord, may you give me grace to pray for my leaders. Say, Oh Lord, I need grace to pray for my leaders. Say, Oh Lord, I need grace. To pray for my leaders. You will see when you become a leader, because some of you, you are seated here, you are actually leaders. You will see when you become a leader by the grace of God. That is not easy to be a leader. Even to be a pastor. I will tell you that I will Hallelujah. He was lifting a part of an engine. And I thought since I was young that I could lift it. He seemed to be struggling. You know, I've got an uncle, an uncle that is a mechanic. So when I tried to lift that thing, I could not move it out of the ground. From that time, I respected him because my back was almost giving way. When I was lifting that part of an engine, it was, a, I think, the part of the, maybe the gearbox. Yes. He was lifting that part of an engine. And because he was bending, I thought I could lift it and move with it straight. I discovered that I couldn't even move it out of the ground. Hallelujah. So when you put yourself in other people's positions, you begin to respect them. Hallelujah. It's not easy to be elite. I know when some people are looking at President Robert Gabriel Mkab, they are thinking if their boyfriend was a president or their husband was a president, they would do a better job than the president. <laughs> it's not easy to be a president of a country. There are demons which will be opposed to you, not to talk of human enemies, because the devil doesn't want leaders to succeed. 
Because if a leader succeeds, people will be happy, people will be praising God, people will be worshipping God, you know, they will be enjoying life. And the devil doesn't like that. The devil likes to see people suffering, sick, hungry, I mean, out of a job, failing to marry because they don't have money, and so on and so forth. That's what the devil likes. So if a leader is succeeding and their policies are succeeding and there is minimum or no corruption, I mean the devil's kingdom will be losing quite a lot. So naturally the devil will be opposing a leader. If you read your Bible, you'll see leaders who are opposed by the devil. In the Bible itself, there was a time when the devil incited David to do a census against the clear instruction of God, and thousands of people died as a result. The devil himself, not another human being, but the devil, the Bible is clear that the devil resisted King David at a certain point so that the children of Israel would die. So let us pray for our leaders. Say, let us pray for our leaders. You know, these, these past few months have been having a pattern for our president and the, the cabinet, the people who are ruling with him. I've been having a very strong pattern for them. I've been praying, and uh, some of the messages that I've been sharing, I've been sharing indirectly, so that uh, some of the things that God has caused me to see, uh, we may pray over them. I, I, I want to transfer that pattern to you, because I know that we are many here. If people in this section, they begin to pray for our country and our president, I'm telling you, it will be very far. Before the end of the year, would be very far because instead of demons resisting our government and trying to create chaos and confusion in our government, God is going to release very powerful angels to assist our government to make high quality policies and there will be brotherhood unity in spite of their differences in opinion. There will be brotherhood unity understanding and the country will begin to go forward. Not that it is not going forward, but it will begin to go forward at a faster pace. So this message I wanted to be shared also on the internet. I don't know what people will say, but I'm one person who when I'm convinced in something, I don't, I don't care what people say. They may decide to say, I may be recently joined ZANU PF. I'm not, I'm not affiliated to any political party. I am affiliated to the Bible. And my Bible tells me that I should pray for my leaders. Do you understand me? I'm not affiliated to any political organization, but my Bible tells me that if anyone is sitting on the throne of leadership, it is my duty to pray for them. I must pray for them, whether I like it or not. I have to force myself to like it. Do you understand? Yes. So I pray for my leaders as a pattern because first and foremost, they are my fellow citizens. As I told you, we share the same passport, we share the same birth certificate, we share the same driver's licenses, I mean license for those who drive, and we share the same IDs for all of them. And because they are my fellow countrymen, we belong to the same soil, we belong to the same land. We are connected by that land. We may have differences in language, differences in this, but we belong to the same country. First and foremost, because they are my fellow compatriots, that's why I pray for them. Secondly, I pray for them because it is commanded in the Holy Scriptures. Do you understand me? Even if there was no verse which was commanding me to pray for those who are in leadership, common sense would tell me to pray for those who are in leadership. Common sense. And common sense is not common. That's the problem now. If common sense was common, we wouldn't be seeing the problems that we are seeing as a people, as a nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to make a pledge to God and say, Oh Lord, I will pray for my leaders. So I've taken quite a bit of time. I was encouraging us to pray for our leaders. Not to mumble a few words over 30 seconds. To say, Lord, bless our president. Lord, bless the cabinet. Amen. And then you spend 40 minutes or four days praying for your own tiny request. <laughs> your priorities will be twisted. Hallelujah. 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 It will be better for you to forget praying for yourself and pray for others. Because by then Jesus Christ, who is interceding for us according to Romans chapter 8 verse 34, he will intercede for you. Because Jesus Christ is doing a better job of praying for you 
than any other prayer that you may pray for yourself. He is right at the right hand of God the Father. And he knows what to say in terms of the things which are actually prevailing in your life. What you, sometimes what you think is urgent are just trivial things. Hallelujah. Sometimes the things which we think are urgent in our lives are actually just useless or trivial things. It's only Jesus who created us who knows what is urgent in our lives. Hallelujah. So...